What is an INTJ? These four letters stand for introverted, intuitive, thinking, and judging in the Myers-Briggs personality typing system, which was based on the psychologist Carl Jung's theory of the kind of functions. An INTJ is someone who prefers to use the kind of functions introverted intuition, extroverted thinking, introverted feeling, and extroverted sensing, roughly in that order of frequency. The INTJ's dominant function is NI. NI is a perceiving function, governing how one observes and retains information, which means that the INTJ, despite the J, actually prefers P, perception, the observation of information rather than information prioritization. As an introverted type, they spend a lot of time observing their personal visions and their inner world, and may neglect or spend much less time being attuned to the external world, whether that's to sensory delights, other people, or external rules. So they spend most of their psychological time looking inward at their personal understandings through NI, which is vague and overarching, focusing on the big picture rather than specific instances. Being an intuition function, NI focuses on what's not concretely there, so not the chair and the table and the room, but perhaps why they're there. Maybe we're expecting guests. The unspoken meaning and intentions behind the concrete facade. Being introverted, NI subjectivizes these elements. In order to make sense of all the conceptual information, it forms patterns and trajectories. Sometimes NI plays with themes thanks to its visual nature, but I think most notably, NI maps out cause and effect relationships, linearly tying together time. Being their strongest function, they'll naturally see patterns and trajectories even in limited bits of concrete information. This is because their understandings are usually deep and far-reaching, that is, connecting all the facets of their life and knowledge to a single pattern, theme, or purpose. This provides a backdrop against which new information is highlighted, then amalgamated. NI finds where new information fits within the bigger picture. So as you can imagine, if the INTJ encounters new info that's completely contradictory, because their previous understanding was inaccurate, that can be a rude awakening. It can take some time for NI to recalibrate or upheave itself. Occasionally, more immature INTJs will even turn a blind eye to the contradictory information or fail to perceive it altogether, since it's not what they were expecting. With all that said, most of the time, NI is quite accurate and useful, giving the INTJ correct inklings and visions of how things will progress, a glimpse further down the timeline. NI likes to coalesce information, holding on to patterns and conclusions while the details get lost. So often, the INTJ will intuitively know what will happen or how something works, but have trouble deciphering the exact mental process that led them to such a conclusion. Basically, while concrete information and personal experiences do all enter and gradually shift in eye perceptions, the concrete information or instance itself is not internalized. As an internal and conceptual function, the contents of the NI mind is intangible and hard to articulate. Most high NI users report having something akin to visions or inklings that are hard to explain. Let's also talk about what the INTJ is not. They actually enjoy the bit of predictability that allows them to know how something will unfold. They like looking at things in a complex, but singular way. Thus, they do not generally appreciate exploring multiple contradictory scenarios that seem to have nothing to do with how one should realistically interpret something. Now, a lot of people get confused here because they think about contingency planning. While well, NI is actually great at contingency planning because of its natural aptitude for patterns, they're able to speedily assess the multiple, most likely outcomes of a situation and perhaps prepare accordingly. I'm more talking about random thoughts like, what if my whole team gets eaten by a shark? Generally, they do not like to dwell on such ideas that do not have any external applicability or relevance. Compounding all of this is the INTJ's other introverted function, FI. FI is a judging function, so it has to do with how the INTJ prioritizes information and makes decisions. Being introverted, it looks inward at its own feelings, analyzing them to produce some sort of judgment criteria that guides their actions. 
FI isn't very strong in the INTJ, so they don't have the finest understanding of their own feelings and their own emotional reactions. This means that the one thing the INTJ might not be so great at predicting is their own emotional response, which sometimes leads to unexpectedly feeling bad about their actions after they've already performed them, or not knowing how they would feel about a situation until they're already in the situation. However, over time, the INTJ's FI does get stronger, especially as parts of it get entangled in NI. That is, they will eventually see patterns of their own emotional response, just like in other parts of their life, and start to be able to anticipate how they would feel in certain situations. This leads to the famous gut instinct or principled nature of the INTJ. Many of them show surprising respect towards their own feelings about a situation, presumably because their NI has learned in the past to trust it. Unfortunately, this means that they can also occasionally get stuck in a self-confirming loop and refuse to look at contradictory evidence. Together, NI and FI make up the INTJ's unique inner world. They create the vast sense that everything is connected and intuitively should have some meaning, which is strengthened by their personal emotional experience. This makes the INTJ very likely to stay on a course that's meaningful to them for long periods of time, giving them their famous tunnel vision and ambition. Lower FI combined with the nebulosity of NI makes it difficult for the INTJ to articulate or express their feelings in expected ways. Furthermore, they themselves might need more time to unfold for their NI to recognize a pattern and figure out what exactly they're feeling in the first place. Thus, the INTJ may be stuck in emotionally destructive situations for a while before they realize that they don't quite feel right. TE is the INTJ's first and most active point of contact with the outside world. TE is a judging function, using external information, usually empirical logic, as a means to an end. TE structures the external world based on what makes sense in the moment, based on what works. Being extroverted, it doesn't retain lines of reasoning beyond their immediate application. Without such a foundation, TE tends to be more quickly adaptable. It tends to more readily make an external impact, though the deeper nuances and consistencies of sound logical systems are often bypassed. Being a stronger function, the INTJ's first and foremost way of communicating with the world is through empirical information and facts in a no-nonsense, almost business-like manner. It prioritizes hard data when it comes to making most decisions, so communication naturally falls under that pattern as well. Simply giving information and saying what's proven to be true in the moment with few embellishments. Thus, there's almost no emotional padding to the statements of INTJs. When it comes to the external emotional atmosphere, societal norms, and etiquettes that others have collectively decided was good and proper, the INTJ generally has no interest. Of course, in some cases, they're practically forced to fit in, which they can mimic to some extent with their TE, though this almost never feels natural nor looks natural to others. When it comes to understanding the rich world of emotions, they're much more likely to look into themselves and trace their emotional experiences rather than adhere to public displays of emotion. Drifting in the internal world is often so natural that left to their own devices, the INTJ may forget to use TE without prompting, even though their TE is rather strong. TE is prized for its general effectiveness and straightforward nature, and so is the INTJ. Combined with their strong NI, INTJs excel at working independently towards long-term goals. The INTJ abides by external reason when the occasion calls for it, but unlike the ENTJ, they do not tend to structure their entire lives based on this external logic, such that while their public, usually work personas are no-nonsense and purely logical, they have greater room for emotional or sentimental whimsy in their private lives. TE is a tool they're good at using, but not something they're always naturally inclined towards. So while the INTJ is great at analyzing a stack of pure data, they often forget their gift of impartial evaluation in the living of everyday life even though this is ideally the first thing to use if they're ever stuck in a rut. The INTJ may be stuck in some illogical behaviors. Most of this may be harmless, but any negative ones could really benefit from occasionally opening up to TE scrutiny. 
Any common function is a double-edged sword. Because the INTJ is quick to spot present logical applications, it can be hard to settle on one particular closed and consistent logical system. Thus, it's possible to see an opportunity and go faster for now, but lose speed or efficiency overall, though this problem is greatly mitigated by NI. Thanks to NI's propensity to distill everything down to its essence, the experienced INTJ usually does have a general logical framework in mind, but they can still be derailed by present logical opportunities or contradictions. Another thing tying the INTJ down to practical, real-world affairs is their inferior function, SE. SE is a perceiving function, experiencing the world as concrete immutable externalities. Immutable not because things can't be changed, you can smash a rock, but it'll still be a smashed rock. This is in contrast to SI, which has a subjective interpretation of the rock, over time creating a subjective image of an ideal or standard rock in the mind's eye. To SE, this particular rock is this particular rock. Being extroverted, it doesn't retain anything, so there's no sense of certain objects being out of place. There's no sense of this rock or this food or this movie not fitting in with others in its category. Each sensory experience is perceived in the here and now in its own right. Although SE is the INTJ's weakest function, it shouldn't be underestimated because the weakness of the inferior function usually creates an insecurity, a preoccupation. Repression leads to fixation. Many INTJs have a love or hate relationship with SE. On one hand, they are free to use it since the messiness of real life always has a way of disrupting perfect cerebral visions. On the other hand, when life isn't working out so well, their lack of SE is the first thing they blame. Many INTJs have experienced the bitterness of missing out on things because they were too busy focusing on their one vision to pay attention to all the other things that life has to offer. Sometimes NI is quite constraining, as anything extraneous can seem like a major deviation from the one path. If only they could get out of their heads and be a bit spontaneous but then they wouldn't be INTJ. This is not to say that INTJs cannot perceive the present concrete reality. On the contrary, many thoroughly enjoy, some even to the point of obsession, certain aspects of sensory life, be it decadent food, booze, extreme sports, music, and so on. However, outside of a few chosen sensory indulgences, when we're talking about day-to-day -day living, the INTJ almost always gravitates towards the conceptually meaningful rather than the sensorily exciting. Insecurity often leads to overcompensation. Ironically, they may even criticize other people for perceived insufficiencies in the SE realm, for example, pointing out concrete things that others fail to observe. Unless the INTJ is under a lot of stress, this usually only happens with topics that are relevant to their NI. Because a concept is so clear to them, the concrete evidence also becomes highlighted, and when other people fail to see what's quote-unquote obvious, it reminds the INTJ of their own tendency to miss certain concrete info, prompting the attack. Furthermore, conscious attention towards the real-world factors in attempt to master the deployment of their ideas can sometimes make them come across as a sensing type, but be not fooled, Generally, they're fleshing out the sensory to pave way for an eye's unfolding. Another way the INTJ may overcompensate is by exploring SE after lending it some in eye importance. An example might be suddenly focusing on beauty and aesthetics because an eye has tied it to a greater theme of the importance of first impressions and being taken seriously. But despite that sensory effort, if someone spontaneously asks them to go rock climbing, they'll still be very likely to say no. With time, they'll be able to strengthen their SE, but it'll still follow the lead of NI. Hey guys, so now I'm going to talk about my personal opinion of the INTJ. So I have no notes. Everything is off the top of my head, so hopefully I don't say anything bad. I mean, obviously, Alex is an INTJ, and she was my best friend for quite a long time, so obviously I have good things to say about the INTJ. Um, one thing that I can say is that they're very independent, and I don't really mean independent as in, like, self-sufficient, although it could be that. 
it doesn't have to be that. Uh, I kind of mean more like independence of thought. Um, in my experience, INTJs do not like it when you tell them how things are or how to do something or how to think about a topic. Uh, they tend to like to figure things out on their own. Um, I guess an exception would be like some technical tasks that they otherwise do not care about, then they would follow instructions probably, but usually, uh, usually I'd say they like to pave their own way of thinking or being, yeah, just like interpreting the world, I suppose. Um, what else could I say about them? I, okay, so first of all, I think I know something like two INTJ women and I think I know like in real life um and I think I know like four INTJ men yeah so this is, this probably will be based off of those people um I think they can be quite they can be so serious like I did mention tunnel vision in the video but yeah that is really seriously there like they can really work on this one thing relentlessly and that's that's really admirable uh but yeah sometimes i think like can you be a little bit more balanced and just go have fun with me but yeah they're very focused on this one thing oh so i guess i can talk about like the se group as well um i'm pretty sure like so i don't know all of these intjs well but the ones that i do know that i'm like close enough to, I guess, they they all have some sort of sensory obsession. Um, Alex was quite interested in art and music. Uh, she also created some art. Um, yeah, and I think they were really good. Uh, I don't think she's, I don't know if she's shown it in our, on our channel, but... Um, hmm... There's, okay, so other INTJs that I know, they might be like more obsessed with partying. I know that's kind of surprising, but you know what? Alex and I used to go clubbing as well. So I know um, occasionally INTJs, they really, they really like to get loose and it's usually with uh, sensory activities. Okay, um, yeah, speaking of which INTJs I'm close to, uh, I think that it is quite difficult to get close to them. It's partly like the independence thing, like no man is an island, maybe except for the INTJ. Um, they, yeah, they, they can, I, I find that they can spend a lot of time just like in emotional isolation, like obviously to go to work, you have to interact with people, but I think uh, to see the more emotional side of an INTJ is kind of like a, a privilege or like it's like a glimpse that they allow you to have. <laughs> so yeah, I think if you um, see the deeper emotions of an INTJ, that actually means that they really like you and value you. Whereas if you see, you know, my emotional displays, that doesn't... <laughs> Oh god, that doesn't mean anything because, well, everyone, it's like right there on the surface, everyone can see my emotions, basically. Um, yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, okay, so the other thing is that it's, it's there. Um, I actually find it kind of appealing, which is definitely not everyone. Like, with the Effie Polar, they are not em like outwardly emotionally expressive at all. Like e I'm talking about the tone of their voice, how much they smile, stuff like that. They're not very expressive. Same thing with the ISTJ. And I think this is kind of off-putting to some people, but it's quite appealing to me because I don't know. I think it's kind of mysterious because it's like my FI wants to see what is underneath kind of thing whereas with um a lot of high fe there's so much already there that i don't really want to like prod and see what's you know on the deeper levels uh yeah and i think it's kind of unique to the itj types because with the etj types even though their fi is lower they um 
Yeah, they're more, I think they're more adept at, I don't know. I think they're just more expressive because they're, the, they're extroverts. So even though they're not emotionally expressive, they do express themselves with a lot of like high JE and higher, higher PE expressions. So yeah, I do, I do think that is the whole like non-emotive thing is very unique to the ITJs. ITPs too, but in a different, in a different way, maybe. Maybe I'll talk about that a bit later when I get to those types. Um, I think, wait, okay, have I, have I said anything negative yet? Like, I don't think so. Okay, so part of this whole like independence thing, I think is also that they might refuse help even, yeah, or yeah, refuse help or even, um, even when they are in a bad situation and they could really use some help, they, I think, may have a hard time accepting it. I also know an INTJ who is at a high position in a company and I think he has problems with delegating, like he just doesn't trust other people to do things. So that could potentially be a negative point. Um. Do I have anything else to say? <laughs> uh, overall, it's a good type, I think. I mean, it's, we're all good types, but I do think that I get along with the INTJ, but it's kind of, yeah, you know what? It's kind of hard to, I think it's very difficult to get close to one. That's why I think I've only truly gotten close to Alex. Um, even though I was trying to get close to an INTJ and we did like spend so much time together, another INTJ, but ultimately it's just, yeah, <laughs> I think, I think you have to get the chemistry really right. Cause the other thing about INTJs with their NI is that I think they have this plan for their life, right? Or yeah. So they can kind of want to fit you within that. The same thing they, they fit as the data points into their like NI kind of like web or backdrop of information and themes, they can kind of meet you and see if you fit into their NI or not. So maybe this is like even harder as INTJs grow older to get close to them. So Alex and I met in high school. So I think that contributed to, you know, maybe the NI wasn't like as strong or rigid and, um, it was kind of being made as we, you know, as she grew. So yeah, I think once the NI is more solidified, it can, it can be kind of difficult because they're kind of seeing if you fit, if you fit within their life or not, I think. Uh, okay. Yeah. I think that is sufficient. That's all I have off the top of my head. I hope the, you know, the voiceover part of the video was helpful. Um, I seem a bit different. I think it's because, well, this isn't really new, but I've actually been like sick. I've been sick since June of last year. So I think I'm just dealing with being sick and my emotions about it are just up, up and down. You know, some days I'm like, okay, whatever. I'm sick. But other days I get really, really upset about it and it does influence my work. Um, it's nothing like, it's nothing like terminal, <laughs> it's nothing terminal, but it does, it is, it is not fun, it's painful. Uh, yeah, so nothing to worry about. Um, thanks for watching. If you want me to, uh, type you personally, I do still offer that service on kind of 8com Okay, <laughs> yeah, bye! Okay, so I usually do this disclaimer bit at the beginning, but it's probably better to do it at the end, so here goes. You've probably heard that the INTJ is intelligent, profound, effective, principled, and perhaps a bit arrogant. In reality, any type may possess those characteristics, while an actual INTJ might not. Why? Well, because those are personality traits, which are characteristics that can change over time and can be consciously developed. Think of it as the content of personality. The content can change depending on what you put into it, which may include culture, upbringing, personal experiences, and so on. Carl Jung was not focusing on personality traits, but personality types, a classification system that does not change over time. Since it is fixed, 
it has to offer enough flexibility to account for the variations within, the variation being the diverse content of personality traits. So think of personality type as the structure that is capable of containing a variety of content. Certain structures may tend to lead to certain contents, but correlation does not equal causation. So what is this structure? In short, it's your system of information digestion. It's how you tend to perceive, retain, organize, and prioritize information. This is denoted by your cognitive functions. At no point should these cognitive functions be confused with universal, biological, and executive functions like the five senses and planning for the future.